So here we are at Walton on the Naze at the Naze specifically. If you can see the uh, 19th century lighthouse behind me, the uh, visitor centre, Wildlife Trust, Essex Wildlife Trust. Yeah, it is. And um, we are going to go over there. You can't quite see it from here. Down to the cliffs and look at the Red Crag and London Clay. See what we can find. So uh, the tide is right in. <laughs> There's the cliffs, but I, I think our, our fossil hunt is probably going to be non-existent. Um, I made the assumption that there would be a bit of space around the face of the cliffs, but it doesn't look like that's the case. So plan B, we'll be looking for coastal plants or just uh, head into the, the visitor center. We might find some rock samphire or something else around here but uh, let's see if there's anything anything to be found so here is the big naze tower lighthouse here we go, it's open. Built by Trinity House in 1720, sorry, it's 18th century. As a navigation mark, this unique building is grade two listed for special architectural and historic interest. Renovated and opened to the public in 2004 as an art gallery, museum, viewing platform, and a cafe. Wow, okay, we're gonna go and have a closer look at this. Well, the tide defeated us today, but I'm just going to walk down the path again because I saw some sea beet, so we're going to collect that and take it back home. Okay, back down one more time to uh, grab some sea beet. Okay, so here's sea beet in its younger form. Um, sea beet is the wild ancestor of our beetroot and uh, sugar beet and sweet chard. As you can see, this, when it's young, the leaves are more kind of pendulum and uh, you can see a purpley stem just like beetroot. So we're probably going to find some in a bit of a cleaner spot and then grab it and take it home for some 
cooking it can be eaten um, raw or cooked and it is also known as wild spinach well um the tide did largely defeat us oh there's a bit of beach now <laughs> but we we probably have to head out but i've just clambered up a safer part of the cliff because i spotted here apologies for the noise in the background here look at this this is a glycemerous bivalve that is one of the valves of the bivalve mollusk and i've just pulled that out of this uh, sandy area we have the um, london clayers at the bottom and uh, formed the rocks on the beach in the base layer and then you have the red crag which is an orangey color stained by iron oxide and then there's the later layers as well i say later the flood did a lot of damage to this world but it's possible they came down later the um the sand and gravel on the top but look at that lysemeris bivalve down at walton on the nays if you can see that properly so we'll take that one home here we go i found some slightly better stuff so we're going to collect the sea beet here and uh, stick it in the bag so <laughs> finally the beach did reveal itself for walton on the nays so we're going to have a look and I'll turn the camera back on if we find anything interesting. We're looking for glycemerous shells, shark's teeth, maybe megalodon teeth, maybe well bones. So we'll see what we find and we'll come back to you in a second. So here we go. There's a big look, looks like a glycemerous bivalve sticking right out there. So let's just... Gently break that away and pull it out. There we go, look at that. Right there, right on the beach. You're picking up uh, fossils, pyrotized, carb carbonized, I don't know if that's the word. Different things, very interesting. We'll take that glycemerous. So I'll do a bit more videoing of our fossil hunting expedition. The kids are out there. Already had people ask me about it. I'm not the biggest fossil hunting expert. But I like to see this kind of almost moraine that's fallen down here because this has already fallen and broken up into pieces. So therefore it's done the job for me instead of smacking everything with this hammer. So we can just rake this back and there may be something in it already or something that has been exposed by the rocks breaking open. We've got plenty of glycimerous shells, whelks, but the daddy we're looking for is the uh, megalodon tooth. We'll keep on raking this back and I'll keep on having a look to see if I find anything.